Are we ready to buy some stock of Mattel after the company trading? What I guess I call a mixed set of numbers after the close tonight. While the fourth quarter numbers weren't great, top and bottom I missed. When you look closer, there was a lot to like. Some real positives. Sales growth accelerated. Management's full year earnings forecast pretty upbeat. Plus, they announced a billion dollar buyback. That ain't nothing. So, can the stock get rolling again? Let's take a closer look with Enon Christ. He's the chairman and CEO of Mattel to find out what's going on. Mr. Christ, welcome back to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. It's great to be here with you. Okay, I'm so gl glad you're with us. I've got to tell you, you did the number, you've got a good outlook, but you are in one tough category. And I think that maybe you can describe when you came on last time. You said, look, Jim, Barbie, not the magic elixir. It's a very tough time for toys. Is it the time for toys or is it toys in general? Well, Jim, we, have, we had the very strong fourth quarter with double-digit growth in top and bottom line and significant margin expansion. The year as a whole was a milestone year for the company. In addition to the incredible success of the Barbie movie, we extended our leadership in key toy categories, gained significant market share overall, and strengthened our financial position. You know, this year, we generated over $700 million free cash flow, which is more than two and a half times the prior year. And we're now just announcing today a new share, uh, $1 billion share buyback program, and believe we're in an excellent position to continue to execute our strategy. Well, I'm glad you brought up the buyback program, because as you know, there is an activist involved. I think the activists may not understand where you've taken the company from to where it is now, but I get that. People on Wall Street, it's what have you done for me lately. Uh, the activist Barrington wanted $2 billion buyback, wants you to separate the chairman from the CEO and has some other requests, including from uh, American Girl. But the fact is, you said, look, Here's what's happening. Barbie is going to be unbelievable for us. It's going to be great. But remember, there's not Barbie 2 yet. And there's not a new thing in the hopper. We're going to just have to exist on the toy business. And I have to tell you, I think that you've been very, very candid that you don't know with the economy where it is and where younger and also less well-off people, what they're going to do to buy. You've created what I think is a, what looks to be the right attitude toward a very tough business that you're in. Look, our guidance uh, positions Mattel for continued execution. We're emphasizing growth in profitability, gross margin expansion, and strong cash flow generation. We expect to uh, grow in 2025 both top line and earnings. And with a strong balance sheet and our continued uh, expansion of margin, we position in the company for long-term growth. I agree with you, but the stock is not going higher, which makes no sense to me. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, why doesn't the stock go up more? And I have to believe, looking at Hasbro, which is not nearly the company that you are, that people have decided that, you know what, no matter how exciting toys are, it's not the way of the future. Roblox is the way of the future. Gaming is the way of the future. I think what you've done is created an artistic powerhouse, and you're the way of the future, but I want more people to believe in what you and I say. Well, we've been executing on our toy strategy very strongly and very consistently. We continue to grow and elevate our IP strategy, our entertainment strategy. And the Barbie movie is just one example. We've done the same in television, in digital, in consumer product, in publishing, in location-based entertainment. And you will see more of that ex execution coming, uh, happening this year. And in addition, we're just announcing today a, two, an, a new $200 million uh, uh, cost savings program that will continue to strengthen our position, not just in terms of cost savings, but also how we operate as a, as a strong enterprise that is positioned for long-term growth. In the toy industry, we expect it will continue to grow over time. It, the fundamentals are strong. We're very happy with our business on the toy side. And in addition to that, expect to grow on the entertainment side of the company. Right, well, do you have discussions with Barrington? I saw you had two new board members. Uh, I know Dawn Ostroff, a powerhouse. I don't know Julius Ganikowski, but I, from the background, looks pretty amazing from Carlisle. Is this the product of the discussion with Barrington, or are you just kind of on your own and just saying, listen, Barrington, good ideas, but we could have come up with those ourselves? Well, we always welcome feedback and, uh, from our investors and happy to have a conversation with our shareholders. We, we've been in a quiet period, and we haven't spoken to uh, uh, our investors in this time frame. And you can imagine that the share buyback, the new board members, all of our various activities have been uh, in play for a while. And we continue to focus on execution. And I can tell you that without getting, getting into details, 
As a management team, we always look for ways to create value for our shareholders and continue to improve, strengthen, and optimize our operations. Well, one of the things you do that I, look, I've been very proud of the things that you've done with Mattel. You've introduced also, you made Mattel look like the world, not just the way it was when I was growing up. I'm looking at some of the new products. I'm looking at an Uno. If we get the whatever team wins this weekend in the Super Bowl, you've got a product ready. I've been telling McCormick to do the same thing for, for Spice. Because if that was what I thought Baltimore would still be in. Tell us about some of these new things and how quickly you can react. The old Mattel would react a year later. What happened? Yes, we very much about embracing culture, creating cultural moments, cultural touch points, and make sure that we take brands that are timeless and make them timely. And we're very good at that. And you will see also Super Bowl product with our little people uh, collector, which is uh, really exciting. And this is what we do as a company. This is what we did with the Barbie movie, where this film became a cultural phenomenon. It wasn't just a movie, it was a societal event. And we look to continue to create these moments, these special connections with people who buy our product. And this is where we evolved as a company, where we think of people who buy our product, not just as consumers, but as fans that have an emotional relationship with our product. And this is what really was behind much of our success over the last few years to become more important, more relevant, and more connected to our fan base. And can you explain to people, as you explained to me multiple times, that Barbie is not one and done. Your idea is to have this to be an entertainment powerhouse that makes toys, as opposed to a toy company that does a one-off movie. I mean, maybe there's something big with Disney Princess ahead. Maybe American Girl can be revived by some fantastic movie. These are all within your ken. These are, who, these are the things that's your DNA. That's right. We own one of the most iconic portfolio of children and family entertainment franchises in the world. And we've proven with the Barbie movie, which was a showcase for how our brands resonate outside of the toy aisle and the cultural engagement that we can create in the marketplace, is, that was just one example. But our vision for Mattel Films, as one example, is to collaborate with leading filmmakers to make standout quality movies based on our iconic brands, that will resonate in culture and appeal to global audiences. Okay, well, when and the point is that oh, our brands are so much more than toys, and there's so much exciting opportunities for us ahead. But, well, one last thing, I just want to, you did flag that you're worried about the consumer. Now, I think we have two consumers. We have the consumers doing incredibly well in this country. Unfortunately, you know and I both know there's inequality in the country. Consumers not doing that well. Where are we? What is your prediction for 24 for whether we have uh, never the twain shall meet or will everyone be able to afford your toys? Well, we expect 24 to be relatively soft, a right. softer year, but not as soft as 23. But what we do as a company, we have multiple price offerings and make sure that we cater for different consumers, different demographics, with different product, a very wide variety of product. And this is where we excel as a company in understanding the market where we operate and driving demand, creating demand for our product and continue to engage with fans of all ages all over the world. Well, look, I think that you've done a remarkable job. I was surprised to see an activist, but you, these are the... These are times where it just, just, it just happens. I've seen you turn around this darn company, and I, I think that you've done an amazing job. I remember it was half this price, and you told me maybe I ought to get interested in it, and that's what I remember. I want to thank you, Don Christ. Mattel, Chairman, CEO, MAT, thank you for coming on, Anon. Good to see you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Man, Mike's back after the break. Coming up, pop open those umbrellas and tee up your toughest questions. Kramer takes on all comers in the lightning round. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.